system architect specialized in networks. I'm a Cisco CCIE certified, and in the last two years, I've been developing in Python. Now, the reason I started to develop in Python is because the way we manage our IT infrastructure is changing. Solution based on software-defined networking and software-defined data center started to integrate in the infrastructure. Moving from box-by-box -box configuration to one-time script-based configuration. No more copy and pasting the same configuration on each device. Just taking the config configuration, throw it to a script, the script will interact with each device, put the configuration, and in the end I will get a report on which devices the configuration succeeded and on which is not. And REST API interface. Most of the solutions that are coming to the IT infrastructure have REST API interface. And if you want to create a custom script, custom tools, you need to know how to interact with the, with the REST API interface. And you can do it with software. So I'm here to talk about DevOps with Python. Uh, DevOps is a software development and information technology operations. And I'm going, going to be focused on the IT and ops. Now, if, if we look at what are responsible, uh, what IT and ops are responsible for, it's actually everything that is not regarding the application development. So it's creating, modifying, deleting virtual servers, database and server maintenance, and network configuration, VLANs, IPs, uh, network devices, actually everything that is not regards to application development. So I want to take the IT operation tasks and to automate it. And the automation advantage is to speed up everyday tasks. I want a faster deployment of virtual servers uh, for faster software version deployment for testing. And I want to have end-to-end -end configuration, including the switches, the routers, and actually getting a cloud-like functionality in the server farm. Now, the automation challenges are multi-vendor environment. Uh, when you have a multi-vendor, not all your switches are from the same vendor. Not all, maybe you're running Hyper-V and VMware. And it's, uh, you need to know how to interact with each one. You need to know how to interact with Hyper-V, VMware, sw Cisco switches, Juniper switches, etc. You have a variety of configuration interface. You have SSH, REST API, HTTPS, and you need to know how to work with each one of them. And of course, the unexpected behavior. Okay, so when, when a human gets into a network device and configure it, he knows when, okay, I got an error, okay, I need to do this and this. When you do it in software, you need to know how to interact with these problems. You need to know, okay, if the configuration didn't enter correctly, what I need to know, what, what I need to do now, stop the script, maybe send a syslog, or something like that. So when you talk about automation, there are two types of automation. There is on-box automation and off-box automation. In on-box automation, I'm running the script on the device itself. Now, there are two problems here. The first problem is I need the device to support. For example, if I want to write the script in Python, I need the device to support Python. And not all the network devices today are supporting it. And the second problem is that if I want to run the same script on each device in my network, I need to load the same script to each device. And if I'm changing it, I need to update each device with the new script. In off-box automation, I'm running the script on my workstation or a centralized server, and the script is interact with each device. There is, an, there is another way to uh, do an off-box automation, and it is with a controller. With a controller, I'm using REST API interface to interact with the controller, and he, and he is doing the job. He, I'm sending him, okay, send this configuration to all my network devices. He's sending me, okay, I got it. Going to each device, putting the configuration, and in the end, sending me, okay, I succeeded, or if there is a device that it's not succeeded, so he will tell. 
Now, the benefits in REST API, it's very, e very easy to work with software when you develop because everything you get, you get is in JSON file. So this is an example of REST API get call. And as you can see, I requested all the interface information from all my network devices, and I'm getting, in, in, getting, getting it in a JSON file. Now, think about it. If I had to do it manually, I had to create a script to connect to each network device, get the output, parse it, work with it, and in the end get this information. With the controller, I'm just doing a get, rec, uh, get REST API call and get all the information easily. Now, in most cases, you don't need to interact with the REST API. The vendors are supplying SDKs to help you to make it easier to interact with their interface. Now, this is an example of a, of a library called Unique that allows you to interact with a controller called APKM. Now, APKM is free, and you can do uh, download it, install it on a server, and just uh, insert all your, all your network device and start work with the, the REST API interface. Now, this is very easy because all I need to do is configure the connection to the APKM, request all the network devices, and go on each, device, on, on each network device and get the interface information. <clears throat> now, I want to take an example uh, in this session. I want to take an everyday task and to automate it. I want to take a deployment of virtual server with end-to-end -end configuration, and I'm, I'm going to show you how I'm interacting with vMware ESXi, the Cisco switch, and the Cisco router. Now, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to use three libraries. Uh, PyVMOMI is uh, a Python SDK, the official vMware Python SDK. I'm going to use Paramico, that is a library for SSH, uh, uh, for SSH connection and uh, scripting with SSH and NetMiko that runs over Paramico. Now, the, the advantage, advantage, advantages of NetMiko over Paramico is that it supports a lot of when, vendors. Now, what I mean they support a lot of vendors is that the library knows how to, how to interact with their, uh, their CLI. For example, if I'm entering a command in Cisco IOS, he knows that if I got an output he knows there is a problem or not. For example, if, I, if I'm sending a configuration lines, he knows that he needs to enter a configuration mode to enter the configuration line. So this is very easy, and there are a lot of vendors, uh, regularly tested most of the uh, big vendors, Cisco, HP, Juniper, etc. And it's very, um, it's very helpful. Now, in my example, I'm going to interact with uh, VMware A6i. Uh, using PyVMOMI and Paramico. And I'm going to interact with the switch and the router using NetMiko. Now, <clears throat> let's start with creating the virtual machine. To create a virtual machine, I need two files. I need the VMX file that contains all the configuration of the VM. And I need the VMDK file. VMDK is the uh, virtual disk, holds all the data of the OS. And if we look at the network flow of the VM, I need to configure a couple of things. I need to configure the virtual switch, that is the port group that connects from the virtual environment to the physical environment. I need to configure the VLAN uh, on the switch. And I need to configure a sub-interface on the router to have, for the VM to have a default gateway to connect to the outside world. Now, this is an example of VMX template. As you can see, it's very easy to read. There's the memory size, and the port group, the display name, guest OS. All you need to do is to alter it via script and to send it to the ESX side. Now, to create a new VM, first of all, I need to create a directory. So I'm sending the command to create a directory using Paramico. Okay, once I have the directory, I need to copy my altered VMX file. Okay, I created the VMX file. I need to copy it to the ESXi. So I have my local path, my remote path, and, I am, and I'm doing it using SFTP, again, using Paramico. After I have the VMX file that contains all the configuration of the VM, 
I need to clone the VMDK. Now, there are a lot of ways to clone VMDK. If you have a vCenter, you can clone a template or do it the uh, other way. Here I'm not using a vCenter, so I'm doing it actually the hard way. So I need to clone a master VM, a master VMDK, for my new VM. So I have the source, I have the destination, and I'm sending the command to clone the VMDK. Okay, so we have the directory, we have the VMX file, we have the VMDK. All we had to do now is to register the VM in the hypervisor and power it on. So again, I'm using Paramico, sending the command to register the VM and turning it on. Once I'm registering the VM, I'm getting a number. This number is the VM ID, and this VM ID is unique, and I can use it then for doing a lot of things, like deleting a v the VM, or powering off, or rebooting, etc., etc. <clears throat> okay, so we created the VM, we powered it on, now we need to create a communication from the VM to the outside world. So, as I said before, I need to create a port group. Now here I'm using PyVMOMI, this is the SDK for interacting with the uh, VMware REST API. And I'm sending the creation of the port group. So I need to create the connection, and then I need to uh, create the port group. Now, as you can see, uh, in this, uh, in this uh, example, I'm going over all the hosts in my net, in my, uh, in, in my server farm and creating the uh, port group, but you can also just create it on the uh, ESX side that the VM is on. Okay, so I configured the port group, I configured the VM, it powered on, and now I need to configure my network devices. So I need to configure the switch and the router. So I'm showing you three examples using NetMicro. The first is uh, sending a show command, okay? So I'm creating the uh, connection to the network device. Now you can see I need to tell it what device type it is, okay? Again, so he can know how to interact with the CLI. When he throws an error, he needs to know that this, an, this is an error. So I'm sending the command, and this is the output I'm getting. Okay, I, I send show IP interface brief that tells the router, show me all your interfaces with all the configuration, and I'm getting this output uh, uh, and predicate. Now, sending a configuration command, here I want to send a IP address configuration to an interface. So I'm creating the SSH connection, I'm using send config set, and the configuration is entered. Now, I want, to sh I want you to see that config term is a command that I didn't send, and the command end I also didn't send. This is done by Netmiko. Netmiko knows that he wants, if he wants to send a configuration line, he needs to enter a configuration mode. So it enters the configuration mode, Sending the, the, uh, sending the configuration line, and then ending the session. What happened if something went wrong? Okay, so in, uh, here is a situation where, where, where the user doesn't have privileges to get into configuration mode. So I'm getting an error failed to enter configuration mode. Now once I have this, I can um, send a syslog, send a mail, maybe throw an error uh, to the user and tell, it, tell him, telling him to contact the administrator to get pr privileges to enter configuration mode, etc. But it's important that, not like Paramico that sends the commands, command and getting an output, uh, and I need to know what to look in the, at the output, that Miko knows already what he needs to, ex what to expect, and then throws an error or not, and telling me if something went wrong or the configuration was ended correct. So, what about the GUI? Um, I'm using a lot with, uh, a lot, uh, working a lot with Django, and the reason I'm working with Django is because it's very easy framework to work, and you're getting a GUI that is, can run on any platform through, the, through a, a web browser, you get a web user experience, and it's very easy to work with. Now, I'm not going to cover all the basics regarding Django, but here's an example of creating a VM model. So this is a model, 
Um, I have the VM name, number of CPUs, memory size, operation system, all the fields that I need to create my new VM. I'm creating a form, okay? I want to, my user to interact with my GUI. He wants to create a VM. He needs to enter the name, the number of CPU, CPUs, memory size, and OS. And I'm creating a template to show the form to the user. Now, in the end, I'm getting something like this. Now, think about it. I took a backend script, took Django as my front end, and created a form for every application developer that doesn't know switches, doesn't know routers, doesn't know even how to create a VM in my server farm, and he now can create a VM, get in, do whatever he wants, and in the end, delete it. So it makes it very easy to work with uh, with Python and allowing, having the ability to create also the backend and also the front. So I want to create a, I want to do a quick demo. Okay, so what I have here in my demo is an ESXi server. You have uh, two VMs. There are, these are my master VMs. If you look at the networking, we can see that I have two port groups. And if I'm entering my switch, you can see I have only the default VLANs, 1, 1,002, and 1,005. And on my router, I have one sub-interface that is the management. Now I'm going to run a create VM script. Now this script is waiting for an input. I will explain it in a moment. Okay. So what I'm doing is I'm sending it the inform sending it the information I need to create a new VM. I'm sending it a name, a type. If it's a database. It's it's a, a desktop, how many CPUs I want in my VM, uh, uh, how much memory, and I'm getting the output of, okay, the type you created, the memory, etc. Here is the VM ID, uh, here is the IP, addresses, IP address, and the VLAN. Now, the VLAN and the IP are coming from a pool I already created, so what the script does is getting into uh, this pool uh, pulls two, v two VLANs with two networks and creates uh, and create everything needed for the communication of the VM. Now, this script does everything we talked about. Creating the VMX file, cloning the VMDK, uh, powering on the VM, configuring the virtual switch, uh, the physical switch, the physical router, and in the end, I'm getting two VMs with end-to-end -end communication. So, as you can see, the script finished. Now, if we look at my virtual server, I see two new virtual server. I can get in, see that it's working. I have the networking. There are two port groups with two different VLANs. If we look at the switch, we have the two new VLANs. And if we look at the router, I have two new sub-interface for connecting the new, two new VMs to the outside world. Question. Uh, I'm as I said, the, 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 the IT infrastructure is moving to software-based. Now, there are controllers that allows you to send commands to all your network devices or specific network using REST API. Now, here, in my example, I don't have a REST API interface to my switch or to my router, but if I had a controller, I could use REST API. In my example, I took the most difficult way to do this, to show you how powerful Python and the abilities that it has 
to create a back end script and a front end and give you an easy way to speed up your everyday. Now, okay, the, the, the configuration I showed you here are not requiring any reboot, but I do work on a script now that uh, updates all the iOS on all the network devices and uh, automatically using Python. And in this case, I do need to reboot my devices. So you need to create a, a mechanism to, okay, I rebooted the device, now I need to check when it comes back. And when it comes back, you can, for example, check if the iOS upgrade finished successfully. So in cases where you need to reboot, you need to create a mechanism to check that the device came back, and if not, so you can throw an error to, uh, to, to, in the application. Okay, so configuration management, uh, there are a lot of solutions that saying, okay, we know how to do uh, everything automatically, but when it's a multi-vendor uh, environment, it's not quite working well. And as a network, um, networking system, you you know it the best. You know the best how to create your VMs, how to interact with the switches. You know what commands you need to enter. You have all your policies and access lists and a lot of things that you know the best. And when you go to a management system, sometimes okay, this we are not doing or this is not working well. Maybe next version. When you create your own backend, backend scripts, your own your own frontend, you're responsible and you know that you can do almost anything. I, I can say that everything I wanted to create is in script, is in Python, I succeeded. There's nothing that regarding network or system that I tried to do with Python and did it succeed. Okay, thank you very much.